Oh, hello there. In this video, we're going to talk about lead code problem 101. It's called symmetric tree. First of all, let's read the problem statement. So given a binary tree, check whether it's a mirror of itself, that is symmetric around its center. First of all, let's just clarify exactly what a binary tree is. With a binary tree, we have this nonlinear data structure consisting of various nodes, and each of these nodes can have at most two children nodes, a left child and a right child. Now, they could have less than two children nodes, but at most, they can only have two children nodes. So here they provide us with two examples. This first example of a binary tree is symmetric. Here we see the root node, which is the one, and it has those two child nodes that we just mentioned, a left child node with a value of two, a right child node with a value of two. And then each of these child nodes are themselves binary trees. So this child node here on the left has its own child nodes, a left node with value three and a right node with value four. This node here with value two has its own child nodes as well, here with a value of four as its left child and a value of three as its right child. So if you look at this third level here, you can really understand what they're talking about when they say that the tree should be a mirror of itself. So let's say we were to fold this tree down the middle. This outer left node here with the value of three would be a mirror of this outer right node with the value of three. And this inner right node with the value of four would be a mirror of this inner left node with the value of four. Now, if we look at this example here, this is an example that they give of a binary tree that's not symmetric. So here we could see the root with the value of one. We can see that on the second level, we have two nodes, each with the value of two but then it's on this third level where the problem is. You see on this second level, its right child node has a value of three. However, this node on the second level should have a left node at the value of three in order to mirror this node here on the right. However, it doesn't. That left node here is null. And the same goes for this right child node here. This one should have a corresponding left child node here. However, it doesn't. This one is null as well. So this tree is not symmetrical. So here's another view of that first symmetrical tree that we looked at. So when we write our algorithm in a minute, there are two basic things that we're gonna to need to do. The first thing is that we're gonna to need to traverse through the tree so that we can visit these various nodes. And then of course, when we visit the nodes, we're gonna to need to do some kind of conditional checks to see if our nodes are symmetric. Here you can see at the very top level, we have the root node with the value of one. And this root node itself, we can consider to be symmetrical because it's basically a mirror image of itself. And we're gonna be given this root node to start off with, and we're gonna use this root node to kickstart a recursive process that we're gonna implement, which is gonna visit the corresponding left and right child nodes of each node. So from this root node, we would next visit the second level, the left and right childs of that root node, and we would compare their values here, and we would see that they both have the value of two, so these are symmetrical. And then from that point, we're gonna visit the left child of that second level node with the value of two, and we're gonna visit the right child of that second level node with the value of two, and we'll perform our conditional checks to see if those are symmetrical. And then as well, we'll visit the right child node of that second level node with the value of two, and we'll visit the left child node of the other second level node with the value of two, and we'll compare those. In this case, they both have a value of four, and we'll see that they're symmetrical. And at that point, we'll be able to return true because we know that the entire tree is symmetrical. Now, another thing that we might see when we visit some of the child nodes is that they're null. But the thing is, as long as they're both null, we can consider them to be symmetrical because they both have the value of null. And so then again, in this case, the entire tree would check out to be symmetrical and we would return true. And now let's look at another diagram, this time of a tree that's not symmetric because this will show us what kind of conditional checks that we need to make in our code. So here again, you can see we have the root node with the value of one, and that's cool, that's symmetrical. And now when we get to level two, we can see that we're no longer symmetrical here. That left child node has a value of two, the right child node has a value of five. So let's call up our box of shame. These are the conditions that'll no longer let our tree be symmetrical. So that first one here that we just saw, is when we compare those two child nodes, but they have different values. Now let's say that we did go down further in this tree. On this next level, you can see another problem. 
And this is where one of our nodes has a value. You can see that left child node with the value of three, but the other corresponding node that we're checking against has a value of null. So that's the second condition here that's gonna make us not have a symmetrical tree, when one of the nodes is null, but the other one has a value. So this tree here gets a big X from us, not symmetrical. Now we should have a good idea of what we're trying to accomplish. And so now we can actually get into writing the code. As you can see, I'm here in VS Code. I have my file open called app.js. And as you can see on line one, I'm importing from another file my binary tree that I created. And I put the actual tree in another file because I just didn't want to clutter up this file. Oh, snap. As well, you can see here, I've copied this from Leap Code, their definition of a binary tree node just to make clear what we're working with here, or what we're given to work with. So each node of this tree is gonna have a val property, which will be the value of the node, and it'll also have a left property and a right property for the left and right child nodes. Now, if a new node is created and no value is passed in or nothing is passed in for the left or the right child nodes, well, in the case of val, that's gonna to default to a value of zero, and in the case of the left and the right child nodes, that's going to default to a value of null. But let's get rid of this here so we can free up some screen real estate. And let's start by declaring our function. So the function will be called is symmetric. We'll set that equal to a function. And this function is going to take in the root node. Right, so as long as we have the root node to start with, we can traverse through the entire tree. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to check for the edge case where there's actually no root passed in. And in this case, we're going to return true. Because I guess if you think about it, nothing is a mirror of itself. Sort of a Zen concept there. Now, if there is a root, what we want to do is we want to traverse through the tree. And we're going to implement that as a recursive function. You know what, before I do that, I'm actually going to put in here a little diagram of the tree that we're traversing. And this is the tree that lead code gave us as being a symmetrical tree. The root node here of one and then the various child nodes. So having this sort of diagram here can help us to visualize things as we're writing our algorithm. But getting back to what I was saying, we want to write a recursive function that's gonna allow us to traverse through the tree. So we'll call that function traverse. It's gonna be invoked within this is symmetric function. We could actually write it within this function but we'll actually write it as a function outside of this just to keep things a little cleaner. And of course we have to define that function. So we'll say function traverse. And what is this function gonna take in? Well, if we get past this conditional check, we'll know that we have a root being passed in, which will be this node here with the value of one. So what we wanna to pass to traverse is we want to pass this node's left and right children. So we'll pass root.left and root.right as arguments to the traverse function. And the traverse function will accept those arguments. We'll call them node one and node two. And the way this whole thing is gonna get started is of course we'll have to call that isometric function first of all, and we'll pass in our tree, which is gonna be the root node. And as well, once traverse is finished recursing, we're gonna to wanna to return a Boolean value, either true or false. So what's going on so far is that we're starting by invoking is symmetric, the is symmetric function, and we're passing in the root of the tree. We're checking that there is indeed a root, and if there is, then we are going to call our traverse function, passing in the root's left and the root's right child nodes. So now for the recursion to happen within the traverse function, we're going to call traverse, passing in node one's left child, passing in node two's right child, right, because those are gonna be the mirror nodes. And as well, we're gonna call traverse, passing in node one's right child, and node two's left child, which as well are the mirror nodes that we wanna check. So look at it this way. When we call traverse, we're passing in these two nodes. This one here is node one, this one here is node two. Then we recursively call traverse again, passing in node one's left child and node two's right child, because these are the mirror nodes that we wanna check. And we also need to call traverse passing in node one's right child, which is this, and node two's left child, because we wanna check if those two are symmetrical. Now, 
know, as these child nodes are getting passed in, this is where we're going to do our conditional checks. And remember, we talked about these conditional checks previously when I showed you that diagram. So one of those checks is going to be to check whether both of the nodes are null. So we can say if node 1 evaluates to false, and as well node 2 evaluates to false, then we can return true. Like for example, if this 3 here was null, and this 3 here was null, then we would know that both of those nodes are symmetrical, and we can return true. Right, because they're null, they won't have any further children below them to traverse. Still, in order for this function to return true, we need both of these calls to traverse to evaluate to true, because we're using the logical AND operator here. Now one of the other things we said was that if one of the nodes turns out to be null, but the other one has an actual value, like a numeric value, then we can return false because we know the tree is not symmetric. Now we're using the logical OR operator here, so this will check the case where one of the nodes is null, but the other one has a numeric value, or has a value other than null, a, a truthy value. Remember, if both of those nodes had evaluated to be falsy, or null, we would have already returned true from this line here. Now the other conditional case, which would cause us not to have a symmetrical tree, is if the values were not equal. So we can say node1.val does not equal node2.val. In that case, we would return false as well. And that right there is the whole algorithm that we need. Let's save it. Let's also wrap up this call to isSymmetric in a console.log so we can go into the terminal and see our result. So let's open up the terminal here and let's run our code. And here we can see we get a result of true. So now to confirm that our code is actually working for both cases, true and false, let's go ahead and copy the code and we'll paste it into lead code. Alright, so let's go ahead and paste it in here. And we'll run code. And here we can see our code's been accepted. Let's go ahead and submit it. And we can see success. So thanks for checking out this video on Lead Code Problems Symmetric Tree. If you enjoyed the video, if you feel like you got some value out of it, please don't forget to like the video and also subscribe so you can get notified of new videos to come. See you next time.